How is it going out there, all you lovely little cretins? Welcome to episode number 82 of the Sounds Like Liberty podcast here on the Launchpad Media, where we are always launching ideas in your direction. I am, as always, your host, Nikki P, here with my lovely wife and co-host, Lizzie. What's up? Should we should we get into the changes afoot as an effort to start things out? I mean, we don't have to get too deep into the changes afoot, but there are changes afoot, folks. Yeah. This whole Iran thing's got me busted up. Well, yeah, there's that. Not the thing I thought you were talking about, but there's that. I mean, that's I thought we were talking about the podcast on the podcast, not like the other stuff. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Anyway, so we're going to be making some changes. One of which... And this is, this is against what a lot of people are telling me, but fuck them. Okay. That's me. That we're going to be changing the name of the podcast. Mm. I don't know that much else is going to change. Mostly, I think we're going to open ourselves up to some broader conversations. Um, but I think everyone else, everything else is just going to kind of be as it is. I'm just kind of, I'm tired of people kind of, I'm kind of tired of the whole libertarian name thing. Okay. And being associated with all these assholes standing up for bombing Iran is really pissing me off. Okay. So, I kind of want to get away from that. But we're still going to have the same philosophy, right? Well, the philosophy is an extension of who I am, so yes. Okay. Just making sure, because I'm sure someone out there is like, this is still going to have the same philosophy, This is a naming convention thing, mostly. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I might like to talk about a few more broader topics. And let's face it, it it's not like certain uh, algorithms don't notice that liberty and stuff. And oh, yeah, I mean, to we've been stuff. getting ass-raped by Facebook since, like, we started. So, you know, there's that, too. I literally had to send Facebook my license so that I could yeah. do shit. But that's, that's how committed you were at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I sent this, that giant wing of the CIA, my, my license. Yep, that's what we did, because we, we believe in the show, and we still believe in the show. We I'll just... believe in it more when I, when I, you know, make us change, I think. <laughs> we just want to have a little bit more uh, more freedom to do do that, that thing that we do. Anyways, so when you see the change, when it comes... Don't panic. Don't panic. To quote Douglas Adams. Peace Freaks is going to be the same classic show, just, you know... Different conventions. Yeah, peace freaks. That's what we're going for here. Yeah, fuck war. I'm really not a not about war. Yep. That's that's how I ended up in the whole voluntarist camp in the first place. It's like you know, call me an old school classic lefty. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely not for the war. You dang dirty hippie you. I am definitely a dirty hippie. <laughs> <sighs> there is that. Yeah. So we uh what do we got coming in today? Whoa, whoa. Hold your horses there, bucko. I think you meant to say slow your roll. I mean, we still have some things we need to talk about, don't we? I guess. So, what do we? What do you think we have to talk about? What am I forgetting? Well, I mean, we should, you know, mention that you can find the show notes and all sorts of other cool stuff on well, Sounds Pardon me for fucking being excited. I, it's okay to be excited. You should be excited because this guest is awesome. But, you know, we got to get the, the useful information out there, too. I mean... And, oh, and we should plug a podcast. Who should we plug? Uh, we're going to plug, actually, a terrestrial radio show oh, slash snap. podcast. Okay. We're going to plug the Free Talk Live. Oh, that is some sort of something. I'm I'm new to the Free Talk Live thing, honestly, and I enjoy it. I got to give those guys props for like just letting people call in every single night. I mean, there's like apparently three Nazis in the country, and they all love to troll Three Talk Live. <laughs> they just just call in. They call in constantly. It's so ridiculous. And like they know that they're not gonna get online. Yeah. It, it, What's well, funny the ways in which they actually do shit and talk. It's 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 hilarious. Mm. It's mostly stupid, but God, it's hilarious. Um, the show itself is good. They cover a lot of stuff. They do. I like some some of the hosts more than others. You may but... not agree with everything they say, but but you know they're. They're having those conversations. I'm pretty on board with most of them. Every single night. <laughs> yeah, they do that shit every fucking day. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't I don't, I don't even want to talk to people every day. Are you kidding well, this me? This is hard to do once a week sometimes. Yeah, right? 
So yeah, go go check out Free Talk Live. There you if go. You, if you don't know, we're 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 newbies to like this. I know that that's been they've been around forever. Like they're, they're, they're old. They're heads, old school. Yeah. But but I'm new to it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and as Liz said, you can all go check out soundslikeliberty.com. You can check out the show notes. You can go find our good good reads links where we're reading books and stuff. Yep. You can go find resources. Uh, we've added a, a merch section to the site. We have. There's some some fun merch. Probably some more fun merch coming. So. I think we have like what is it? We have a mug that says "Parent Right: Teach Your Kids How to Skank." Yes, that's pretty, that's a dance thing, by the way. If I'm, you don't know, I, don't I mean care. they should know, but. You could teach them how to like skank, like be skanks too. That's that's whatever. That's up to your parenting style. I've got nothing, I nothing suppose. against the one way or the other. You do you, right? Um, but yeah, we got that. Uh, you got the Freedom Choir as always. Yep. Throw us a few shillings because this is not free to put out. No. Put some effort into it, and it's if time. you do sign up for the Freedom Choir, there will be coupons for merch. Yeah. Or whatever it is, like a coupon code. Along with all that fabulous stuff behind the paywall. Married to Liberty, Year Round Tree. I'm working on a few other things. I yep. got a few things in the pipe. Always got things in the pipe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Try to keep it uh keep it hopping. You know, and and not just the crack pipe. Okay, well I don't know what that's all about, but I feel like you can lose weight doing crack. I've never seen a fat crackhead lose. Okay, fair enough. But you know, it just makes you think of Whitney and Bobby, and this that whole thing just seems like. Oh, and you think that that's supposed to deter me? You think mentioning that diva and Bobby Brown is gonna make me want to do something less? No, no. I I suppose that was that is a not the angle. That is a horrible misjudgment on yeah, your part. Yeah, fair enough, folks. I am sorry. I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> I was just Anyways, honest, honestly. is there is there anything more we should do? You want to correct me, and then you want to try and get me doing crap? No, like, I think what's... we're good. I think we're good now. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, let's let's get into this interview with the fabulous Mister Cam Harless from over at Make Liberty Great Again, both the podcast and the network. There you go. So let's bring this one in. Enjoy. Uh, welcome to the Sounds Like Liberty <laughs> podcast. We are here with Mr. Cam Harless of the Make Liberty Great Again podcast. How are we doing there, Cam? I'm doing all right. I yap apparently too much. No, no, that's it's not a problem. Yeah, that, um, that was just chuckling because we were apparently having like a huge conversation before we actually started the show. So there's well, that. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like I'm looking at myself in the in like a the, uh, the past. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. It is. Well, that's what's that's what's funny because the first time I heard of you guys, it was actually someone posting in my group a picture of you two and saying, is this Bizarro World you and Kim Shang? <laughs> yeah, she mentioned it uh, when we had her on, and I'm like, that's funny. I mean, you know. There are there are some odd similarities. There There's are. There's no arguments. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you and Kim have a show and you could be like Bizarro, sounds like Liberty. <laughs> we, could, we, could make a co- we could make a comic book about the whole thing. We we used to. That's how um, the you know make liberty great again, and then the network came into being, was because Kim, me, and another girl named Sarah, uh, we we actually met in the uh, the Jason Stapleton group. Oh wow! Oh man! <laughs> Which we uh, when we we actually me Kim and Sarah were admins of that group. And we were like, hey, let's make a podcast. And we went off and made our group and we're working on that. And then I don't know if you know this, but Jason Stapleton is a giant douchebag. I've, um, I've heard. And, I mean, yeah, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, yeah. So one of the fun things about that was we all three of us as admins left at the same time when he went on a tear against anyone who was anarchist. Oh, and it's really he, they, funny because he has Matt on the show now. 
I know. Uh, actually, Matt and I were pretty close, actually, until I was like, you know, I can't do it with that guy anymore. Yeah. And then that went south quick. Yeah, I've met, and then, you know, of I've, course. I've met him precisely once in person. It was um, interesting, to say the least. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah, anyone, that was. I can't imagine anyone being less whelmed to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be the best way of putting it. Yeah. I like Matt. It, Matt, I've never met in person, but I, I have a feeling I would have the same type of reception from him at this point. Uh, well, I've never met Matt. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was referring to Jason, uh, honestly. Jason. Uh, oh yeah, did. no. Matt, I haven't met him, and oh boy, I met him at uh, Pork Fest yeah. uh, this year, and I mean he, honestly, he spent most of his time that I saw him staring at his cell phone, kind of looking like he's like, why am I in the hills of <laughs> New Hampshire? <laughs> with, why with am I not people? back in L.A. You know, Hollywood? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I have, I have, because of that connection, and because when we left, he like th- there was a big deal when we left. Because he actually like went on his show and did this. He didn't use our names. I remember. Was like we had a dust up. Oh man, yeah, that was us. <laughs> uh, I I've, I've known and, a bunch of people that have worked with him in the past. Um, <laughs> to say to put it lightly, uh, honestly, my, the, the bigger issues I've seen people have had with have been over the whole family thing. But oh yeah, well the the when that happened, we were actually the source of that information oh. because a concerned party that was a part of it actually came to us. Mm-hmm. So we well, all going to make me fun. get out my teacup here in a minute. So maybe we- I, don't know, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, she wants me to spill the tea. Oh, okay. The, the Kermit the Frog meme, you know, with the. Oh, okay. You're speaking is if memes are things that happen off the internet. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I haven't quite, re- I haven't quite come to that world yet. That's fine. Um, I personally, I do. I am, I'm still a regular listener of the program, and I think his program is far better now that he stays out of politics for the most part. I like Imagine him. That. I like him better as a, as a self help guru than somebody shilling for fucking shitty cops. <laughs> so no, yeah, well, that's the that's the thing because he because he came he came at us with a lot of um, animosity. There was actually a an article written about it. I mean, from uh, some liberty, it's like the Liberty Conservative or something like that back mm-hmm. then. And by nature, I'm a troll. Yeah, right. and I don't. I mean it in the Michael Malice way, not in the just being an asshole for fun kind of yeah. way. Like literally, <laughs> like just, so about. Two years ago, probably my favorite troll that I pulled on Stapleton was when he came out with his new logo, which was that golden eagle logo. Okay. Okay. I, think I, remember. I don't know if you ever saw that one, but the, the logo is a golden eagle and it looked a little bit reminiscent of like a Nazi okay. golden eagle uh, flag. Okay. Yeah, and so I took a Nazi golden eagle flag and I edited it to look like his thing, and then me and a few of my of my people <laughs> created a Facebook page called the Alt Reich. Oh, and I remember. Used... I remember that. <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no, that was the the fun part about that was one of the guys in our group had a an old. Uh, Facebook page that had a whole bunch of likes on it and so we actually went into that and made a bunch of posts and backdated them oh, so that it looked like we'd been around for a while and oh my god that I think that might be my favorite because it's <laughs> he tries to keep a cool head <laughs> but you could tell he was just he wanted he I don't know if he knew it was us but he knew <laughs> well I'm I I, I think I'm finally coming to terms with that my 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 thoughts that him and Mance the whole thing was was a planned thing of uh, if 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 it was they they did it perfect hmm. but uh, you know because I thought for sure him and like the whole him coming out against Mance was a like a a thought out thing kind of like pro wrestling but, yeah. <laughs> No, but Mance is not giving yeah, up on yeah, it. So there you go. Uh, I think yeah, the whole no, thing was funny, but 
that was definitely one of those moments that because we had kind of I had some fun fact Mance is actually the person who bought my um my second microphone the one that I had right before this one mm-hmm. just send it send it to me yeah. so I could start back podcasting again um but it was so funny like we didn't actually talk that much until that moment because I was like hey come in here this is this is where we troll him from. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I got lost. Yeah. Kim and I, we, we had that situation with him. We started the podcast and I think it lasted all of nine episodes before, because we had no purpose. We had nothing that we were really pushing for. Yeah. We didn't have a vision so much as like, Hey, we like each other. Let's talk. And it just, you know, it went nowhere. And then uh, I rebooted, um, make Liberty great again in February of this year. And then since then we've added four, four additional shows Mm. to our little fledgling network. Most of them, my idea. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) I dig it. (laughs) A lot of fun. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Where was I going here? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of waking up. So. I'm just. I'm thinking about how entertaining uh, I find your show in particular because I listen to all the shows at work. So, you know, um, let's just say there's a different sort of energy that comes through the headphones when your show happens, <laughs> which is always fun. I listen to too many libertarian podcasts to differentiate any of them, frankly, at this point. But. And, you know, somebody won't actually put the names of the podcast in the feed, so I have no idea what I'm listening to half the time. <laughs> so speaking of that, you gave us that note. And the fun thing about our network is we built all of the software for it. Yeah. And all, of, all, that, we, all that we run on is something that essentially – I say we, but most of the, the grind is Ryan, who does the show Techno Agorist. Yeah, uh, but he put that he put our entire network infrastructure together uh, on Thanksgiving weekend last year. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's it's one of those things where he actually was get, he was on there. He was like, "You're going to be talking to the Sounds Like Liberty guy t- tonight." And I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "I want to get it, that done for him tonight." And then like <laughs> maybe an hour ago, he was like, "I can't do it. I, it's <laughs> it's I, I'm I'm having to put in all new architecture, blah blah blah." And I'm 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 just about to change the you know insert nerd talk here. And he's like, "But tell him." That it's coming, we just have to do an overhaul first. So it's, hey, it's, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I, I I just moved. I just moved back to where I just have all of the single feeds. So it works like that. <laughs> well, that is something that someone else asked for, and so it's 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 something that we're working on. Or he's. Working I kept on getting this. I kept getting I, duped into listening to the morning drive, and it was. <laughs> You're like, dang it again. Not that I have anything you know, against I just this wish... podcast. I'm I'm just a nut job for audio, and I hate listening to drive time recording. And I I understand. He, he, like, clear, he clearly I'm has a... his audience if he's still doing it, but it's like, ah, uh, not for me. <laughs> Seems like a nice enough guy. <laughs> I've talked to him on Twitter and shit, and he's, oh, yeah. he's cool. It's like, ah, uh, too. I've got too much time to listen to shit that bugs my ears. No, I, I, I definitely understand that because I, uh, well, with David, if we could just get him to stop talking about guns for half a second. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There's a lot of those people that like guns. <laughs> yeah. No, but no. No. <laughs> I told him after you talked to Kim and you, he, you said something about that, I was like, you need to put a shotgun in your intro now <laughs> or some sort of weapon, some loud blasting weapon, just, just so that the next time he accidentally listens to it. <laughs> <laughs> he hears those guns. There you go. Well, I felt bad because like I well, it was it was not. I think I came out stronger against him because like I, I tend to amp up on the show, <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't have no. anything against the guy. The show is fine. <laughs> really, my issues are audio quality. <laughs> but, but in the moment, well, you're just like, yeah. ah, fuck it. Let's just go with this. Whatever, whatever this line of conversation is. Let's see if I can get the guest a little on edge. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Kim, Kim's well, way like, too way I, too I, I'm, lighthearted that I don't think I could do that though. <laughs> She's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Well, that's what's fun is since I edit because so, we did the way we do the network is like uh voluntary vixens, uh thank you for your servers. And well, D- David does his own thing. We haven't moved him fully over onto the network just yet. We just haven't had time for it. Yeah. Um, but Every every other like I I edit mine, um, 
you know, Brian edits his and then he'll, he'll edit. Thank you for your servers because that show, like they'll talk about things that I have no idea about. And so if they make a mistake, I'm not going to catch it. Oh, for but sure. Ryan will. And so I, so I edit Les Retarian, uh, voluntary vixens and my own every week so like i i definitely understand audio quality i keep being forgetting to ask her what the fuck is the thing about uh u-hauls i i don't understand oh, oh there 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 are a lot of things that i made because i thought they were funny um like <laughs> okay. her her intro about muff diving like i wrote her intro Oh, I know. I and, love the muff diving uh, thing. She she mentioned you specifically on it. I'm like, yeah, that totally speaks to me. I listened to the show because of that. I love muff diving. <laughs> we need. I. I. This is clearly like that. It was clearly directed at me because right. that's. I'm. I'm. Yes, I'm of that person. <laughs> <laughs> but the joke about the U-Haul is with lesbians. Um, you know, on the on the first date, they bring a U-Haul because they're they're going to move in. It's just an, it's an old lesbian joke. Okay, <laughs> I and I was just like, here, let me let me let me throw that together for you because all the lesbians are going to be like, <laughs> I get that. Okay, I've never I've never known many lesbians. It's always it's always been kind of a weird thing to me. I know more now than I used to. It's just it's I've, interesting. I mean, well, I've always been that, cool I've, with them. I didn't know. Well, that's the thing. Like, I didn't I didn't know a whole lot of lesbians, but. For the for the longest time, they just hated me for some reason, and oh. I couldn't explain why. You're too masculine. Uh, but it's, Kim and it's I, the beard. Kim and I just, I I've, I've thought about that because I was like, you know, because I'm, you know, rocking. I haven't shaved my face in since 2013, so I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, Kim and I get along like peanut butter and jelly. Like that, yeah. if none of our Aww. none of our thing would have existed whatsoever if it wasn't for Kim Shang. No, she's uh, she's I was good, very good people. Oh yeah, and I was very excited when <coughs> she the reason her show Lesbertarian exists is and she was she, we were talking about that the other day. She goes, "You know I was making a joke when I said I was going to start a show called Lesbertarian, right?" And I was like, "Well, I didn't care. I just wanted you to be on my network." <laughs> yeah, I didn't care. <laughs> I wanted you back. <laughs> she's got a good personality and for outreach purposes, I think she's awesome. Oh yeah. Definitely. And, and that was one of the things because we the different shows that we have, like mine's just me being an asshole on the mic when I can. I just yeah. I, 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 I hold back some because not everyone that I don't know. Sometimes I hold back. And then you throw <laughs> in <laughs> and, and, and then you throw in a church episode and completely lose me. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you're welcome. These yeah, damn right. Christians <laughs> just multiplying. Oh, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm just going to, I guess, let well, them it's, it's, it's like this is a Chris, a Christmas episode. I need right. to. I mean, I, th I have four kids. Of course, I'm going to multiply. <laughs> yeah, put the kibosh on that ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's uh, all of the shows that we've done. Mine's just me being whatever talking. I, the reason mine restarted is because I keep there have been a lot of shows, Liberty podcast that i don't listen to any of anymore like that make, probably makes me a bad person in the liberty podcast no, not at all. there's too fucking but, many of them to listen to all of them. unless you're like me and host a podcast about libertarian podcasts so yeah mostly i listen like nine out of ten times if i have a podcast in my ears it's michael malice i, just, I wish i wish he'd do more yeah yeah, yeah i mean i got compound media just so i could watch nightshade yeah i couldn't do it <laughs> I uh, but uh, don't like enough. I, I I can't justify one show, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I got a, I got a better job and had an extra seven dollars a month, so I was oh, like, well, hey, nice. Where where am I gonna waste this seven dollars? <laughs> um, so you know, that all of our shows, like mine's, I I wanted to find something that was because I. I wanted a Liberty show that talked about the news, but that didn't take itself so bloody seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And didn't, didn't spend so much time in economics because I'm, you know, I'm a capitalist, I'm an anarchist, but for the love of God, I get tired of hearing about economics. Like I, I want to talk about the dog and pony show and the other, I want to, you know, talk shit about cops a lot. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, you don't get that in news. And I was like, I'm going to do that. And then all the other shows I was like, I love Maddie. I wanted Maddie to be on a show. And so I, you know, I paired her up with Jesse and 
I didn't care about the tech stuff. That's all Ryan. And there's another, <laughs> if you, if, yeah, if, if, as you say, if you did care about tech stuff, there's another really, really good one. Um, it's called uh, artificially intelligent. That is, uh, yeah. they focus a lot on AI and like the actual business of technology. They get a little more economic about it too for people who are into that. So it's basically everything that you hate about podcasts. They <laughs> they wrapped show. up in there. <laughs> so he's like, let me tell it, you about this thing that, that I, you're gonna hate. <laughs> it's not that I dislike podcasts or I dislike economics. It's just. God, it's just boring to me. I mean, I get it. I understand it. I'll talk it, but yeah. keep it short and talk about this this amazing point in history where, where the world is going crazy and we can laugh and smoke cigarettes off to the side. I mean, <laughs> there's so much goodness to just just laugh at. Why are we not doing more of that? Well, I mean, it's it's whatever. Yeah, I, just, I realized I realized that. <laughs> I mean, I have no out, so it's whatever. If he if he manages to get enough content that I don't need to, I did that. I won't, and that's that. There you go. Um, <laughs> it's just a lot of <laughs> a lot of pre roll. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your show? Oh uh, well, you know my my show, like I said before, my show actually started in 2016. And I think November with Kim Shang from Lesbertarian and a girl we, we knew named Sarah. And at that point it was, it was nothing like it is now. It was just us trying to, I think we kind of talked about the election stuff. And one of the girls was a little more alt rightish than I was always comfortable with. So that kind of fell off. I got kind of, I got kind of uninterested in, cause I like, I, I like talking about Trump when, he does something that makes me laugh or he does something that trolls the people that I, some, some other people I don't like. Yeah. But when it's just like pro Trump, I'm like, yeah, let's not do that. So I got bored and I think it ended after about nine episodes. And, you know, we, the, funny enough, David Derryberry was the guy who came up with the idea for our network. And uh, he, I'm curious he, what your idea <laughs> for your network is. Um, that's cause that's one of the things that I always focus on. Like I started the, Liberty Hippie Network. Um, we have a very specific mission and a reason why we take the content that we do and put it in the feed. Um, so I'm curious if there's a specific, like, guiding ethos or audience that you're trying to reach with the Make Liberty Great Again feed. Well, the it's it's less of a well written out ethos as it is. I am one of those people who I'm an idea guy. And a lot of times I have a hard time making ideas come into reality. Mm -hmm. And so when I was thinking up this idea, I had all of these different ideas, but I like to invest in people, people that I believe in. And when it comes to, cause I don't think my voice is necessarily all that important, but I like to make fun of people and troll. So that's why I have my show. I like to talk about things that I care about, whether or not anyone's listening. It's, you know, fun for me. But there are people like Maddie from Voluntary Vixens, who I wanted to have a show for her. As soon as I, I restarted mine, I was like, we should do more. And I, what's funny is all of the names of the shows I've made up, but <laughs> um, no, I, it, they're just people that I believed in and wanted to hear more from myself. Okay. And so it's less about, oh, hey, well, here's, the, here's this audience that we're trying to reach or this world that we're trying to change. It was more, what is it that I have been wanting to hear when it comes to Liberty Podcasts? What am I missing? 
what do I think adds to the conversation? Okay, so your ethos is just, you know, self-flagellation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, yeah. that's, that's, just, well, I mean, that's as reasonable an ethos as any other one. I mean, it's... I, there's, I mean, there's more to it. We, we, we're all very... Oh. You start trolling the troll and he gets all well, weirded I'm, out by it. That's all it is, Liz. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's. I'm, I'm look. I'm, know, co I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming before. for the vixens. Like they're gonna get switched hey, really? to the <laughs> to the Liberty again? Hippie Podcast Network. I need them. <laughs> I, I need to have the well, Reiki. The fun thing healer. about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if anything, I would just try to have them do both. But. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, it's, it's so funny because I told I told them that I was talking to you, and they were like. They keep saying they're coming after us, but they've not once asked us to come on the show. What's going on here? I actually thought I, I actually tried contacting them. I got the impression they they had no interest in talking to me. To be completely honest, I've tried contacting them a couple times, and they've been very standoffish. I just didn't want to bother them. Did they just think you were oh. another neckbeard guy? And... I, I, entirely possibly. I don't know. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe they just didn't know who you were. <laughs> <laughs> in relation. to... I mean, they may know what you do, but they may not have known that that was you. Yeah, yeah whatever. I, 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 I hate like uh, <laughs> I hate like trying to put myself upon anybody. Um, and it is a, uh, if nothing else, it's made for a fun conversation to kind of put out there in the ether. <laughs> just, just keep bringing that up. <laughs> I love their show. Like it's, it's a great show. They have a good rapport. Um, and specifically like with the Liberty Hippie Network, my goal was to try and <sighs> to approach. Um, a very specific subset of people. Like I, the whole idea was to kind of maybe, maybe people that are flirting with the idea of it would kind of come in from the left, perhaps. Even what's funny is that like that's the people that actually run the shows are not like that really at all for the most part. Other than I think mm -hmm. maybe me. <laughs> um. <laughs> like right, you know. But I'm like, well, we've we've got a, we've got a good weed podcast that'll fit on a, a hippie network, and you know, we've got an environmentalist podcast that would kind of I feel like go to that audience. But the idea I think was more to just show, like, you know, we're that <laughs> libertarians aren't aren't disgruntled Republicans. I think that is right. probably more than anything right. the goal of the network. I just I I, I want to put more content in feeds where people like people are more willing to sign up and say, oh, okay, well, I like all the stuff on here and don't have to skip shows as well, much. Well, that's, that's kind of also kind of how ours works is because my show I started making because I wanted something. There was something missing, I thought, and yeah. I thought, you know, maybe I can do this. And then the next show that we did was Voluntary Vixens, which was me going, okay, I'm a dude. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, period, but I, I know that there are girls out there because I've seen them all over Twitter saying, why aren't there more female libertarians? And I'm like, there's a there's a niche there that is not being met you know, on a grand scale. I can add someone like Maddie, who is very well versed in libertarianism and it's, it, you know, Maddie and Jesse both, um, but very well versed and really gets it and can speak it and is very just very intelligent and what if i met that that need and that's kind of been how it's gone from there so tech uh, techno agorist is ryan's baby because he's he really likes the technology he had the idea for the thank you for your servers at, uh, show but then goes oh i don't want to do news so he moved on to doing his little three to seven minute show about technology and agorism and I mean, his show is very concise. I'm more apt to listen to his show than the other one just because, like, I can fit about that much attention span into that. Thank you. Thank one you for the, your servers. Thank you for is your a servers. lot. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for your servers. They're actually the, – the episode we just posted today, um, they actually spoke to a guy named Joshua, uh, Joshua Ferguson who is uh, out in Fullerton, California. Mm-hmm. And he and uh, his the friends for the future of Fullerton, which Fullerton's where the police killed Kelly Thomas a number okay. of years ago. And so they have this little blog where they uh, keep the government and the police accountable. And apparently there was an email that was sent to them with links in it.
that had a bunch of government documents. And so they took those documents and they put them on a blog, on their blog. Hmm. And so now the, the state is actually, or Fullerton is suing them for releasing information that they sent directly to them and left open links in the email to. And so I haven't listened to the whole interview yet, but according to Ryan, that's the, the episode to listen to. If you listen, it to is one. in my feed. It is, I think, the only one sitting there I haven't gotten to. I I started listening to book five of The Expanse last night too, so that's been <laughs> killing a lot of my time. Sucked you in. <laughs> I'm listening to The Moon Is a Harsh Mistress at the moment. Nice. Oh. That also is good. Um, yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> I, I got I got sucked into the show on on Amazon. Like he, you can think he's an evil, you know, technological overlord, but. He's got really good taste in television programming. Well, there's that. Like I can't, I can't argue. <laughs> Bezos likes good stuff. That's why we think. That's what me and a number. I of haven't people. watched it yet. Uh, do you like? I mean, do you like hard sci-fi? I mean, I, 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 if it's well written, I like it. It doesn't really matter the genre. Well, I, I, like, I prefer I hard sci-fi. Watch like, the Expanse. I think, I think, like, I don't. I never got into, like, say, um. Just say it, Star Trek. Well, Star Trek Just and Star... It. I was going to say Star Wars. Star Trek's a, li- a little bit more my speed, I think, than Star Wars is. Oh, uh, well, maybe. Star Wars is D&D with technology. Okay, kind of. And, and I like my D&D and technology <laughs> separate, kind of. <laughs> um, But, you know, I like my Isaac Asimov type of stuff where it's just very, like, very technological, perhaps. And they that particular yeah. show gets very, very, honestly, gets into the weeds with a lot of like <sighs> social politics. Um, mm-hmm. In particular, the whole show is focused around the way in which <laughs> the UN basically took over planet Earth and then mo- started moving out into space. And oh, that <laughs> terrifying, right? <laughs> no, thank you. Well, yeah. no, thank you. Well, but the thing is, is that the show actually does a fairly, what I think is a fairly honest job of what that would actually be like. Um, it, it it doesn't in any way glorify like that's the problem with Star Trek is that they right. make it seem as though oh it's going to be a perfect world when this happens and luxury space space communism. Yeah, it is very kind of. Yeah, and they do not do that. Like they make it very clear that there are people that win and lose in this transaction and there's reasons for that, which is why I like it so much. Um but basically so like the, the right around the book that I'm at which starts happening in season 4 of the show, they the the idea being is that Mars is a colony. Like all the people left Earth they went to Mars and they're going to terraform Mars and become their own planet. They start so essentially you have a giant war between Earth and Mars that's kind of going away. Earth kind of doesn't care anymore. They're just trying to protect themselves perhaps. Meanwhile, you have like all of the quote-unquote belters which are basically like the the people that don't that work for the companies that are on one of those, you know, Earth or Mars. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And they want their freedom because they feel like they get shit on by the people that live on, you know, part of the the governments. But one of the things that's interesting is that Mars, the whole idea is like you have an entire, they are like the idea, basically they are the Star Trek world where everyone is going for this goal right. of being a, uh, everyone's working towards a terraformed Mars. It's the only thing that everyone does and everyone finds their kind of position in that goal. But when all of a sudden this gate opens up to thousands upon thousands of new worlds that are habitable, it kind of makes the entire idea of terraforming a planet seem stupid when you could just up and leave and go to one of the planets that's already ready for you to live on. And you start watching like the the civilization collapse on Mars because it, there's no point in it anymore. And just, just that one little there's thing. There's no shared purpose. Yeah, the shared purpose is gone. So everyone's like, well, why am I sitting here slaving away when there's people that are going and finding their own place in, in the, the scheme of things? And it's it handles, like I said, it, more than anything, it handles the politics very honestly, which I like. Hmm. Hmm. So 
I know that I was just a way too long of me explaining the expanse to people, but I mean, you're clearly very excited about it. So I am incredibly like, you know excited. What? I'll just let him roll with it. It's not. It's not a show for me because there seems like a lot of like gore and cloak and dagger and people suffering and whatnot, and that's not a thing I'm into. But there's a fair amount of people suffering, mostly because of the UN. Yeah, which <laughs> which, which is why any libertarian should like the show. There you go. <laughs> it, 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 it is the dream it's realized. Too real. It's yeah. too real for. It's too real for Lizzie. Well, I, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's. I, there's a thing called basic on uh, on planet Earth, which is, it's essentially universal basic income, and they do not point, paint it favorably <laughs> as to what it has done economically to the planet. Yeah, which is not kind of what you'd expect, given modern politics so i i just find the whole thing yeah. very interesting they don't like the yang bucks <sighs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing with your yang bucks if he wins oh good god <laughs> that's like nothing yeah uh, i'm, I'm gonna put him. it into the ground like a good libertarian right? i'm gonna hide it fuck that i'm like putting Ron that, swanson i'm putting that shit in bitcoin <laughs> yeah <laughs> every every last every last penny of it You're throwing it into bitcoin <laughs> why not throw it in crypto yeah, get it to wherever that's not dollars. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> and yeah, they can they can inflate the fucking dollar away all they want. I wish I'd have thought about that's the one thing sooner. I don't get about these these people that are so into gold still. Yeah, it's just like it's great. I mean, it's nice to have gold, I guess. But our technology, why would you not go towards cryptocurrency and just say don't? Uh, but I've never listened to Schiff, so who who knows? <laughs> um, well, no, there are. There's, first off, there are actually a couple different reasons. I mean, the biggest of which being you can't hold your crypto. Yeah, there's nothing to it. Um, a lot of people. One of the the things I always hear is, "What happens if the grid collapses and it doesn't work anymore?" You know, and I'm like, "Well, if the grid collapses, I think a currency is probably the least of our concerns." Like the turmoil that yeah. that would send the fucking. <laughs> That's why I was told people like I went and got trained as an electrician, and the reason I told people I, I went into it is because there is literally nothing, no, there's no job out there that I can see not going away as little as an electrician, because if that ever happens, <laughs> lots of bigger problems than finding a job. I'm probably gonna be. <laughs> Are the zombie hordes here? Have we been attacked by aliens? Yeah. <laughs> like the, the things, Building a bunker, probably. The, I, the things that would precipitate that job going away are far worse than looking for a job if I ever had to. <laughs> yeah, I just I just meant more of the people who completely shun Bitcoin for gold. Oh, okay, yeah. I think Schiff shuns it because yeah. he is trying to sell gold. I'm going to be sense. honest. I'd yeah, be really money. surprised if he doesn't have a ton of it. Schiff's not an idiot, but he is a he is a shill. <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, I, I I think in some cases it's a certain amount of like it's always been there and this Bitcoin thing is new and, you know, not to be like boomers, but I mean, there is a certain new amount things of things scare people. Yeah. Of comfort in this thing that's always existed. And we like oh, being absolutely. comfortable. I mean, I, I diversify. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I think that that is probably the key to anything is don't have anything, all of your value in any one thing. Right. Be, don't let it, because any, any one thing can be attacked and they can't attack everything all at once. Right. Um, you know, there is also the fact that gold has some utilitarian value in and of itself as it a product. Yeah. Not that I'm absolutely. looking for gold. For I mean, I'm personally one of those people that like, <laughs> I want to have the bunker with all the actual supplies in it because, you know. What if yeah. you can't actually exchange in the middle of whatever ridiculous zombie well, what apocalypse a, is happening? One of my big issues, with, one of my big issues against gold is that, yeah, it's it's handy until you have to move. Right. <laughs> in, yeah. in which case, carrying around a sled yeah. full of your gold bars probably isn't the best right. way to live. <laughs> You're gonna be a a pretty easy target for the guy with the bigger guns. Anything physical is far easier to steal. Yeah. Um, you know. And if you don't, if you turn it into a digital product, which a lot of people have tried, well, then that means someone has centralized control over the gold. Yeah. Which also is a bad thing. So always with the caveats and the trade-offs. And the... Well, I mean, I, I think that that's the, that's why. I, well, he said Cam does like oh, I'm not really into the the economics. 
the thing is, so few people understand economics in any meaningful fucking way. Like, we need more podcasts that's, that's about true. economics. And like people really don't understand any of this. Just make it interesting. Can we do that? Why can't Thomas Sowell have a podcast? Yeah, that, that's that's what I'm saying. He's got like pithy statements and everything. He does. Oh man, I wish I would have could have like seen Thomas Sowell back when he was a young guy. He's kind of, from what I understand, he's given up like making public appearances and stuff. Yeah. Because I'm told Tom Tom Woods has been trying to get him on for years, and he just he can't he's retired well i mean i feel like in the yeah. the modern you know sort of media environment like it's a tough position to be in the, what he's done what to be a being 90 year old black man is like you're all a bunch of shitty people <laughs> kind of yeah <laughs> you can only take so much of that well i mean and cosby didn't make it any easier for him well i hope we never i hope we never <laughs> get that like Thomas Sowell's been drugging women for years. Oh God! <laughs> oh boy! God, what would happen? Be heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Would... What would happen if that came out? Like him, him and Walt <laughs> William, Walter Williams used to just run trains on bitches back in the day. Oh my God! <laughs> there was the, all the wild stuff that used to go on at those economic conventions <laughs> back in the sixties. <laughs> Gold to, gets me hard. I think I need to develop like some type of like. Is it the hard currency? <laughs> <laughs> Just giving her, giving her the old hard currency. Oh, no greenbacks up in here. Put your coin in my slot. This is terrible. Oh, it well, took a turn. <laughs> it's the best kind of turn for anything to take, though. So why don't I'm kind of curious? We we I do uh, pretend that we're still a music podcast. So. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, like, <laughs> you know, where you fall on that that spectrum? What what do you listen to? What keeps you amped up to fight the state? I am a very boring person when it comes to that, or maybe I'm not. But like my my most played band of the last probably three or four years has been the the Yvette Brothers. Okay. Like I I I love Amer like Americana. certain Americana kind of stuff. Yeah, like it. It was one like used to. It was always you know hard rock and all this other stuff. But I I hit like what twenty twenty around twenty. I was just like I I really want to listen to some folk music. <laughs> I <laughs> love I, that. I, That's I, I amazing. Never, and the, I never a, fully stopped. I just and the Avet Brothers are where you go for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I. I can't tell you how much I love them. That's so delightful. <laughs> I'll give them their their. I I I, I always like that one big hit they had. The you and I or the other one. Um, they do have amazing vocals, and lyrically speaking, oh, yeah. I, I don't dislike them. We we do uh, I and loving you. Uh, we learned it for a wedding a couple years ago, and my acoustic uh, duo does it occasionally. Aww. What? I don't know weddings. Sorry, I had a moment. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> yeah, um, I. But yeah, with, with it, when it comes to music, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, which oh, you wouldn't okay. think there'd be a whole, a lot of music coming out of there. Why wouldn't you think um, that? I don't know. I just feel like that's not something someone thinks. And so you know, I want to listen to some good music. Let's. I mean, some of the biggest go to Alabama. Some of the biggest <clears throat> bands of all time are from like, of, of of that. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> well, I mean, my my entire high school career was me going to concerts constantly huh. uh, one of my favorite bands of all time they're not together anymore um but it's there's a band called wild sweet orange and i'm curious i'm kind of curious was, what they play I, I think i went to it it's weird because sometimes you can describe a band just by genre i mean it's 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 definitely they're a rock band but if i were to describe them i would say they sound like a thunderstorm but like a soothing one, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Getting all poetic but, over uh, here. Liz is from Texas, I, I, so she has a different relationship to storms than I do. <laughs> we, we've had this conversation. Oh, no, they have soothing storms in Texas. It's just, you know, they also have twisters. Well, yeah, but I don't differentiate those two. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't uh, either. My wife is terrified of tornadoes because one of them tore up uh, real close to us when in a couple of years ago. But I am still the guy who I, I want to sit on the front porch and I want to watch the thunderstorm. Well, and I and I do, and and a lot of it that it, it's entirely one hundred percent a geographic thing for me. She grew up in Texas, where it's fucking flat, and that shit just goes and goes and goes. Yeah, I grew up in upstate New York, where because of all the hills, mm -hmm. 
like you can see a tornado it's never like even if you see it it's not probably going to get to you because it has to, it, it can't travel over the hills in a meaningful way so like they'll touch down mm-hmm. for a little bit and then kind of go just disappear because that's just geographically the wind can't do what the wind needs to do to keep them going for a long period of time. So if I'm, you can sit on your porch, absolutely look out and see it like two or three hills, you know, away and know it's probably not getting anywhere near you. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I'm just fearless. When it comes to it. <laughs> I'm just dumb. I could, I, just use, love it. I could use that. Good for you guys. I'm just stupid. <laughs> I'm just I'm just stupid as hell and like to watch the, the destruction of the environment. I mean, it's it's a pretty impressive thing to see. Though. It is. They are amazing. And I like watching oh, videos of it. them now because the internet exists and I can do that. But like in person, thank you. No. So since we're on the topic, what are your thoughts on the <laughs> what are your thoughts on the, the soundtrack to Twister? Do you remember that? The sound like the movie Twister? It, yes. Good freaking Mike. <laughs> Who remembers that? I, I do. I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, it had it had uh let's see, a couple of the highlights would be an Eddie Van Halen song called Respect the Wind. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> and then uh let's see, it had Long Way Down by the Goo Goo Dolls on it, which is a good one. Oh, that is a good song. Um what are some other hits that were on? Like it had a fairly, it was a fairly good soundtrack. I just remember seeing that movie and thinking how ridiculous it was on so many. <laughs> oh <levels>. no, <laughs> that's what Bill Pullman at Bill Pullman's finest. No, no it wasn't Pullman. No, it was... it's the other one, Paxton. Paxton. Bill Paxton. Yeah. Uh, rest in oh, peace. Bill I always Paxton. got them confused too. Because yeah. it's easy to do. Well, they they've always kind of like done very similar movies. Somewhat, kind of. <sighs> Which one was in Big Love? I think that's Bill Paxton. I think so. <laughs> because if it was Pullman, I would have actually wanted to see it. Yeah. It, it, look, Bill Bill Paxton did one of my favorite movies of all time, which is Club Dread. Oh god! And he plays a Jimmy Buffett knockoff, and it's oh, fucking god. hilarious. He he, there's there's like this the scene where they're all playing around a campfire, and he yes. freak, and he freaks out because someone's like play, what is it play what is it? play play Margarita Bill, oh. and he's like I think you mean Pina Colada Berg. No, I don't play Margarita. <laughs> He's like, you fucking mean Pina Colada Berg. I wrote a goddamn song eight years before that jackass. <laughs> it's like the whole thing. He's just, it, basically, the whole premise is he's this guy who basically was Jimmy Buffett before Jimmy Buffett existed and like is now super pissed off. He's like, he's doing all the same shit Jimmy Buffett does, but he's like not quite as successful at it because he's not Jimmy Buffett. Right. It makes for one hell of a running joke. <laughs> Yeah, you talked me into watching that one. That was actually pretty amusing. Well, it's if if, if you don't know, it's all it's the same people who did. Uh, it's the Broken Lizard guys, so they're the Beer Fest and um, Slam and Salmon, and probably the most popular one that they did was Super Troopers. Right? Yeah, Super Troopers. Yeah. Let's see here. So on this on this soundtrack, while I'm I'm still feeling like going with it, this is a great soundtrack. Listen to these pe- like. So you got Van Halen, Rusted Root, Tori Amos, okay, Allison Krauss in Union Station. What the heck are you gonna put Tori Amos in there? Mark Knopfler, Soul <laughs> Asylum, Belly, Soul Asylum, Katie Lang, Lisa Loeb, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Goo Goo Dolls, Shania Twain. Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham. Were they just trying to make a 90s time (laughs) capsule? They're just like, let's take some Will of Fair and like some of these pot smoking bands. And it's, I I don't know what the hell their idea was, but it it encapsulates that time period incredibly well. That's amazing. I think the only thing that is a a better collection of that era is the soundtrack to the movie. What the hell is it there? Batman Forever. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a solid. Which one. is forever <laughs> one of my favorite soundtracks. Like between the Flaming Lips and <laughs> Oh God, what's that freaking song that I love? The the Hunter, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds are on there. Um, Massive Attack. Yeah, like makes makes the bat nipples worth it. Almost. I don't know if anything makes the bat nipples Almost. worth it, but but I I I I am glad that the soundtrack has outshined the movie yeah. in, in history because you can still there's still people that know and love that soundtrack, and fewer and fewer people talk about the movie. It had, like I, I'm pretty sure that that U two song is going to forever eclipse that movie when everything comes down to it. Which U two song is that? And I know for sure that. Kiss from, oh, Kiss from a Rose by yeah. Seal is yeah. going to eclipse that movie. For sure. You're never getting rid of that one. <laughs> God, it was such a good song. Yeah. we uh, I, I've been performing it a little bit here and there lately. Well, Irma knows it now because of, uh, <laughs> you know, the kids know it because of the Sing movie now. What, they did Kiss from a Rose on Sing? Yeah, one of the uh, auditions is a, a yak singing. Or no, it's a sheep because <laughs> he sings Babe. <laughs> Okay. Of, yeah. Um, so you, you got you got kids. You got a couple of them there. Um, what is the yeah. worst thing that you have to sit through? Oh God! For your kids, oh, there's so much terrible nonsense. I used I to think I used to think it was frozen, but I was wrong. There's something far worse. Yeah. Well, there you go. I got so lucky. My none of my kids like frozen. So I've not had to suffer through that. We like managed to stay away from it, like through the whole first thing happening, and then the second thing happened. Yeah, and it all she. Came she back. I don't think she knew anything about it until the second one, and then she started seeing all the ads for the second one, and then she got obsessed. Yeah, but um, she's over Frozen well, now. Oh yeah, she, so Frozen's it's garbage because not... she's got descendants now. <laughs> High school well, musical for my kids. For my kids, the most annoying thing isn't actually a movie or a TV show. It's um, this the Spider-Man PS4 game. Oh, okay. okay. Because because they're they're god awful at playing video games because they're still little. <laughs> okay. But they every time they beat the Kingpin, which is literally the first mission in the entire game. That's a shitty they game. Stop then. and start a brand new. They do it again. They start oh, the game no. all over again and fight the kingpin again. Oh, and so God. I've watched them. Be- well, and, and that's the thing. I'm the one who has to beat the kingpin because they can't. <laughs> so I have plenty of practice at this point. I'm just like, stop. Play- just keep going. And they're like, but I want to fight the big bad guy. They either are not going to fight it anyways. So, <laughs> uh, so wait, the kingpin is the first boss in a Spider-Man video game. Because yes. that, that is literally the dumbest construction of a Spider-Man video game I can think of. Like, well, it it's it, the the game is actually pretty good because it it shows the rise of um, Doc Ock. Okay. In the, in the Sinister Six, so I mean, it it just starts with oh well, we let's throw a big one out there and then we'll move on to the real story. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it starts with Fuck I guess this. they just wanted to get past the. Oh, I know what it is. I think it's hilarious when it comes to movies. Mm-hmm. I have seen it's the same thing. It's Spider Man. Uh, what's that? Uh, Into the Spider Verse. Oh, I've heard good things about the, that one. Though. The cartoon. Yeah, it's a great movie. I love it. Lots you can of propaganda only watch it in there. Seven, seven. You can only watch it about seventeen times before you want to kill yourself. Though. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and what's funny is Miles Morales in that movie has a black Spider Man suit. Okay. He also happens to be biracial. And so they don't ask to watch Into the Spider-Verse. They ask oh, to watch Black Spider-Man. Yeah. And, and so it's one of those things where it's like, I know where their brains are. Yeah. But when we go out, when we go out in public, I'm like, please don't call him Black Spider-Man. No, which is awkward. What, what you need to do is you just, you need to stop, you need to stop putting that on and you need to put on Venom. Because Venom is Black Spider-Man. <laughs> It's Miles Morales <laughs> bullshit. No, that's not how that works. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Venom is Venom. He's like a whole different thing. <laughs> no, he's Black Spider Man. That no, was literally he's a symbiote. That, yeah, but that's that's not the point. He turned Spider Man he... black. That was the point. Go and read the comic books, Liz. I feel I like have no I, idea. I, I, I don't, don't know. I, I feel like I'm uncomfortable with where you're taking this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, where I'm taking it is <sighs> venting about the terrible crap your kids Venom watch. turned. Venom turned Spider-Man 
Oh, man, I into Rachel Dolezal. There it was. I just screwed that joke right on up. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah. Oh, who was who? Somebody I know did a really good um, write up on the Into the Spider Verse, or did a a good conversation about it. And they they said by and large it's good and it's entertaining, but man, it's the fucking status propaganda in it oh, way right. way deep. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's something I consider. I, I just, I mean, there, there are a lot of things that I can. I just never like when it comes to superhero movies. I, with the exception of the ones that are clearly ch- pushing buttons yeah. on purpose to piss me off. That's all of them. Like, now, I, isn't it? It's getting more and more. Like I, I think I'm done with the Marvel universe. <laughs> yeah, I think most people are. I don't, I don't know. If I'm done. But I, I, I did. I, I didn't really pay enough attention to that in into the spider verse because i was just like hey look a cartoon yeah <laughs> yeah no i recently actually just went through the whole well almost all of the mcu movies um up to Endgame because like i'd missed a couple of like the captain americas and whatnot and i wanted to see the thing and now like looking at it yeah. you know from a liberty perspective a little bit more it's kind of like wow you guys are like all up in the government and like just meddling and people's stuff and like oh Wow, there's a lot of that yeah. in here. Well, I mean, the inte- what is it? Civil War and the Winter Soldier <laughs> were both like all about that whole thing. Yeah, you know, you got Tony Stark, who, which is funny because Tony Stark's like the 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 capitalist, who is perhaps more accurately portrayed in the movies than anyone else because oh, he does what like any ultra wealthy capitalist does, try and use the government to his advantage. Yeah, and then he's like, "We, yep. I don't have a problem with like looking at what everybody on the planet's doing and having guns trained on them all the time. We'll keep us all safe or whatever." Like, dude, I think that that I think part like Captain Marvel was ham fistedly written movie that is so some parts were so stupid that I couldn't deal with, but there was this little bit, this little thing in the middle of the movie that if they had actually spent more time on, which was this anti imperialistic part of the movie hmm. that if they had actually focused on that more it would have been incredible but they were like no we got to make him make her beat up a guy and steal his but motorcycle that, but that's the thing because that's not what lefty hollywood <laughs> gives a shit about anymore they don't yeah. give a fuck about about war come on you're thinking of the left of 20 years ago <laughs> back when i was voting for ralph nader <laughs> you weren't voting yeah, for I don't, ralph I, nader I, I, <laughs> are you, I mean not 20 years ago because that would have been like you know, 11 15 <laughs> <laughs> but 15 years ago, I definitely voted for Ralph Nader. I don't know okay, what you're okay. getting up in my piece about. I, I was voting for the green candidate. Oh, wow. Yeah, no neocons here, honey. I, I've, I've always been a revolutionary. I perhaps didn't understand my revolution at the time, but... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, that probably wouldn't have got me the results that I wanted. Not so much. Which is why I do find myself in a unique position. <laughs> like... It's my the, my 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 claim to fame is being the one lefty hanging out with the Tom Woods crew, <laughs> trying to convince everyone else that look, you guys, it, it's it, that you were they're totally okay with us. Like, Hippies aren't so bad, guys. Well, that's oh, where that's where Kim from. came from was the left. Oh no, I I love talking to Kim about that because like it was there was definitely a lot of being being a musician like it's just on that's what you come from. <laughs> so there was a lot of. Yeah. In- interest listening to somebody else because there's very few of us that managed to make it over here and I think it has more to do with culture than anything once again like why I started the Liberty Hippie Network because like there's a lot to keep you away a lot of reinforcement of oh well this is what they are yeah. and there was nothing out there to kind of no one I guess the things that you could lean in on to kind of tell someone oh well we're not that they're lying to you nobody takes the time to do because they're too paranoid about SJWs coming in and stuff like that, and I think they miss out on a lot when, and that's why they focus so much on disgruntled Republicans, who frankly aren't any yeah. more libertarian than you know a hardcore anti-war leftist that you're never going to see because you're just focusing on the economics. Right now, well, then if Kim, I I witnessed Kim's change from lefty to an, uh, anarchist, so that was like a very cool thing to watch because you know i i voted republican unfortunately in the past but it was one of those things that as soon as i heard ron paul talk i was like okay that's what i've always thought 
<laughs> and I just didn't have words for it. But it was really interesting because in in one of the groups that Kim and I were in, um, people would jump on her from being from the left. And I was like, guys, chill the hell out. She is trying to come to us. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and for, for me, one of my big points is and that's why, why I started the Free Market Screen Earth podcast is that, God, they really sh- shove it down your throat. Like, oh, well, capitalism is why the, uh, the earth is fucked up. And the, the, the idea that a bunch of people that have never seen the fucking forest are going to tell you how, what, what's good for the environment politically is just fucking yeah. ludicrous. Like, so what, what, all these lefties that have never left New York City who make all of our laws, they somehow know right. how to protect trees. Meanwhile, I grew up in the fucking woods. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> they don't know shit. And there's nothing... The, the, the best thing for the environment is private property rights, 100%. It has been... History has been very clear yeah, on this. Absolutely. Um, Somebody posted online the other day, and it was uh, a post about... It was someone who I think is, is, is at the very least sympathetic, but the the post was about, um, you know, well, what about these giant corporations that do shit? And I'm like, okay, well, first off, doesn't even matter, even if the corporations do pollute. The corporations don't pollute as much as the fucking governments do. And in most right. cases, the, when they pollute... The number one polluter and destroyer. Well, and it's like even if they do, in most cases, it's always it's, the damn snake. It's mm-hmm. because the FDA signed off or the uh, EPA signed off on it. In other words, the government, like the the fact is, the government keeps us from suing the shit out of companies that should be sued the shit out of and forced to collapse. Right. Um, it's look because including they, Pfizer. Oh god, don't, 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 this is this one. Don't even start on this shit because <laughs> uh, that's chilling. that's a rabbit trail. Yeah, we we, we don't have the, the time necessary to get into that. That's <laughs> that's why I have an entire podcast on it because there's just too much. And when you <laughs> I, when we were doing it, like at a certain point, I'm like, what? I mean, do you th- I, I don't know if we'll have how long we can run with this. How long can we come up with you know shit that the government does and fucks up environmentally? And how how hilarious the idea that we couldn't just talk about that endlessly is because, man, <laughs> God, every, every time you look at a newspaper, there's just no some, more, some evidence of something shitty that they did to protect a company yeah. and putting people in danger. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad you guys are talking about it. So <clears throat> what I'm curious, <laughs> what is your let's see your your hot button? What is the thing that? gets you riled up more than anything. Like for for me, one of the big ones, my I guess my big one is uh, the education system. Uh, so a lot of people, it's war. Some people, it's economics. I would I, I have what I would guess yours is, but I'm curious for to hear out of your mouth. I I'd kind of like to hear you guess. Oh, your yours is porn. Clearly, we have to end the porn. And clearly, yeah, it, it needs it needs to be made illegal immediately. <laughs> Otherwise, Matt Walsh will never talk to me. <laughs> no, it's it's hey, poor forever, man. perpetually. There shall be poor, and if that's all it takes to keep Matt Walsh from talking <laughs> to me, please let's start making it. Make let's manufacture more of it. <laughs> that, that's all it takes. I, and honestly, I, I would assume that you're an anti-war guy. I'm a yeah. There there are a couple of things that get up under my under my craw, as it were. But war is is the biggest one for me war and public schooling and the police like it's it's the police has been the most surprising thing to me because i used to buy into police being the good guys Mm -hmm. and now i know for a fact that the the safest place you can be is as far away from a cop as possible i won't argue that there's there's nothing to be said about it (laughs) sadly (laughs) but no war war is war is huge to me i had a, a lot of like I can't tell you how pissed off I've gotten over different war things. Like on it, I was talking to my my brother who moved out to California and has just drifted left. And he's like so worried to talk to me about war, and I'm like, "What do you think I believe?" He was like, "Well, you know, I just assume you're like mom and dad and you're pro war." And I was like, <laughs> "How have we not talked about this?" Well, but <laughs> I'm more anti-war than you are. <laughs> Well, no, that's that's what's uh, why I think like the, the Mises Caucus and the Libertarian movement is so fucking important, because 
if nothing else, the the Libertarian Party has definitely let it slip what the fuck they're about. Um, I, your ballot access is worth jack shit if you're not advocating against the war state. It's just... Well, one, one of the things that I've said is there are a lot of red pills that lead you to libertarianism. Go figure. The Michael Malice the fan wants to talk about pills, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> but but after, after, for me, one of my, what I think is a red pill is just how detrimental the libertarian party is mm. by nature. Like I know that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Rothbard was a part of it and wanted to see good things come out of it. But maybe I'm actually black pilled on the LP. I don't know. I, um, I well, can't do it. My, my big thing is, is that I, I, I just from a functional level can't allow the biggest thing that carries the name libertarian on it to not at least make an effort to be libertarian. Because the fact is, yeah, your brother, yeah, I get your, that. your brother feels the way he does because the, the only thing he's probably ever seen with libertarian on it has been fucking Gary Johnson. And what is he, what did he really put out there? He was he was wishy washy on fucking everything. So well, and, and I just take it from a different perspective because I I joined the Libertarian Party in 2016. I was like maybe we can make this thing work, and then Gary Johnson happened, got disillusioned. And at this point, I just like m m the way I want to do it is by resetting that definition by shitting on the Libertarian Party when they do bad stuff, <laughs> when they do stupid stuff. And there's no, short no, kind of no more... shortage of that, I will, I will admit. <laughs> and so that's my that, – that's that's just kind of, – it's like uh, – what was it? I forget who said – someone was talking about how in these – in this area in, in Libertarianism and things like that, they're the people that are like Superman and want to save the good people – and then there are the people who are Batman who just really oh, want to yeah. beat up the bad people. Yeah, that was uh, Michael Malice talking I'm... to Stapleton. <laughs> of course it was. Of course it was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. You, you can't get away from more it. more along the lines of, that's, that's all that is. I can't, dude. I, 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 the, he's, he, he's just a very – he's very influential to me at this point. Of course, I don't think he's ever talked about the LP. But I, <laughs> I'd much rather beat up on the bad people. Interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i curious, since you mentioned you used to be involved with the Jason Stapleton group, how much did you like that uh, that group that he had set up there? Well, I was an admin of that group, and there was, there was a time when it was good, but that was just because of specific people hmm. that were I'm in the I'm curious group. It wasn't, it was when like, this okay. was good. <laughs> Like when when there were less than I want to say seven hundred people in the group. Okay, so probably before I ever got there. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was when Kim Shang came in when like the people that I took with me. Because <laughs> when I left, I took a bunch of people with me, and so when they left, I want to know is I don't know where it went from. There. Who's coming with me? <laughs> the movie quote. Saying man. You're gonna freak out, but I just want to know. Coming with me, Jan? Yeah, it's it's half baked. <laughs> oh, okay. it's always half baked. What am I thinking? It's always half baked. That is Jim Brewer. I yeah, I totally get the hey, reference hey, now. Hey, fall, which is quickly followed <laughs> up by with, Hey Jan, do you want to be like my girlfriend? Uh, no, I'm a lesbian. Yeah, I'm a big dyke. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the most ridiculous. And he's like, oh, all right. What's that like? <laughs> oh, Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer is something. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I am. I am curious what it's like to be a lesbian, but <sighs> you know, I don't know. Mm. Okay. Anyone who likes pussy as much as I do, big on them. Yeah, they're good people in my book. <laughs> there you go. I frankly don't understand why all <laughs> women aren't lesbians, but I'm thankful they're not. So, well, I feel as though we have kept you, you know, a long time, which may not show to our guests because, you know, we talked for an hour before we ever got to the, the actual show, <laughs> which I don't know that I'm not lazy enough to actually put in the show. Not to mention, hey man, you know. Do what you will. <laughs> uh, what, what's, uh, what would you like to get out there? Any, any last words for you? 
some plugs? No, I mean just the the whole network. There I mean, you go. I we I work in me and Ryan both, but I work incessant incessantly editing all of these shows and spend a lot of time doing it. And my God, I'd like to hear more people. I'd like to see more people hear some of the good voices that we have. Not mine. You, you can skip mine if you want, but the rest of them. <laughs> Listen to them. Nice. Nonsense. <laughs> You know, just, you know, <laughs> the more Bible talk you, you get, the less likely I have to listen. <laughs> I, uh, it is a Christmas episode, man. Yeah. There it's going to happen. I have to go listen to the Christmas <laughs> episode now. My phone's been down. It's, it's all music. I wasn't hip. Apparently, Cam went and wrote a bunch of songs and made people sing them. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there we go. He, he, there, he basically did there. what I'd planned on doing. <laughs> okay. And then we didn't have enough well, time we, to record. We, we got... <laughs> well, what's fun about the Christmas episode was that I asked the people in the network to give me a recording on Christmas Eve. Oh, wow. That was when I, I thought about it. So what, what it ended up being was um, Maddie sang a song and kind of did some joke stuff in between different parts of the song. I had Thaddeus uh, read How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> I wrote a a version of Twas the Night Before Christmas that was uh, Twas the Night Before Boogaloo. Oh. And it, it's a whole poem about... You just stole uh, our entire premise, Liz, like for our well, shooting. No, shooting it's, it's not stolen if he recorded it and we didn't. So. Oh, no, our version was going to be way, way better, but that's... That's neither here nor there. <laughs> You're just so but I was because well, I was it, so that's because I, mean, I spent was going to spend two and a half months making it, mm -hmm. and then so like I had all the ideas and everything to go, and then when it boiled down to it, like to, when when people would have actually had time, or when people would have actually been in the mood to record a bunch of shit for Christmas, Liz was just so deep in work that I just couldn't get the time together to get anyone around. It's like I wouldn't have been able to do what needed done, sadly. So, you know, he, he he did that work for us and we appreciate it, Cam. We're I'm just gonna go listen to it now. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm just gonna go and like release it as ours. <laughs> That's awful. Just, just download You're gonna be just real confused. Just right? down download the MP three and like, put what it the out. Heck? What why is why is Bizarro Nick? I know, the just Bible? confuse people even more. Uh, well no, I mean they could that that could also just be Nick ten years ago. Like this is literally, I think you're just me 10 years ago. It could be that too. Before I discovered Buddhism. Uh, you know, I, I have a, I have a degree in biblical studies. I, so, I, I, it was, it was, it was on the table at one point and then I, I got my first blow job and decided, no, I'm probably not going to do any of this. <laughs> be very, very candid about it. Like going the into power the power of suck compels you. you go, go. Going into the priesthood sounded like a great idea. And then all of a sudden, oh, it didn't anymore. <laughs> so yeah, definitely not Catholic. So I mean, blowjobs were always in my future. There you go. Yeah, the, <laughs> I was brought up Catholic, and that's all. Yeah, you don't realize how much of a cult that shit is until like you you get out of it, and you're like, oh, that's a cult. Oh no, my my wife's grandmother's Catholic. I I see it a lot. Well, no, once now that I'm out of it, I'm like, oh man, like that is just weekly brainwashing. Over and over again, like, and they are really, really good at it because they don't deviate. Like that's the same twenty stories every other, like, just in a rotation, forever. There you go. Uh, Liz is, uh, you know, what Baptist, or whatever you brought up. I I was in a lot of the Christian churches, evangelical, I guess you could call them. But yeah, so it's a, we have a very different picture of what our our. The whole spiritual thing is well, yeah. I think there's and like it an took idea. Me a long right. while to figure that out. <laughs> I think there's an idea of like a faith community that you would probably have that doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Look, it's either I believe all of these rules or I don't believe all of these rules. Right, and that's not how it worked when I was. <laughs> it's a different thing. Which is <laughs> yeah. which is probably why the Catholic <laughs> Church has so much difficulty with retention because you guys like it was all about relationships with people and humanity and stuff like that. Catholicism is really just about the fucking rules. Like, yeah. well, this is what God said it is, or this is what it is, and uh, that's the important part. There you go. I don't yeah, know. I feel like there are a lot more nuanced conversations that I've had than a lot of the people that I've spoke spoken to that are Catholic and trying to convince me that because 
that was the weirdest conversation. A guy tried to convince me that because there wasn't a record of Mary's grave in this one city, that that meant that she was assumed into heaven. And I was like, wow, because you couldn't find something. That's an argument from silence. Let's not do this. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, uh, that's an odd one. Yeah. Well, I'm, <laughs> what, what, was, what was I was what? what was I listening to the other day that it was getting really into some religious weeds about proof and stuff like that, Liz? Do you remember? Oh, uh, it was an atheist podcast, right? Uh, okay, yeah, it was uh, the what was it the Governing Ourselves podcast was doing a review of this book by this one guy. Um, and I think he, the guy, the author, was a historian who came from like the church. And then walked away from the church because of like basically the hist- the historic record that he could find. And I think ultimately what he ended up finding was how much of it was just human decisions for political reasons that things happened. Because I mean, there's a lot of the books of the Bible that just get plain ignored. You know, then you look at when certain things were written and why did we include this? When, what does this have anything to do with it? Kind of stuff. Uh, it was very interesting. Re- listen though, it was interesting. Go listen to Governing Ourselves, people. <laughs> but before you do that, go and listen to the Make Liberty Great Again podcast. Yes, uh, it it is fun. I enjoy it. As snarky as I get with, with Cam here. Uh, is is Cam short for something, <laughs> or do your parents just name me after something that you'd find in a machine? <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's short for Cameron, unfortunately. That's not uh, a bad name. But... It's, that's what people say, but I still don't like it. <laughs> okay, well, that's, I like that's my I like my... I, I like my middle name less, but that's how you know, would that's how would you that. feel about sharing a name with Kirk Cameron, Liz? But it's not the same. That's his last name. Why does that matter? People might still think of Kirk Cameron. They think of him. I'm. I, I think that. your decision was uh, was the appropriate I, one to okay. make. Do you want to hear something that I'll, I don't know if my mom is being serious about or not? Oh God! Oh Jesus Christ! Please. <laughs> is that why your name? My naming? whole life. My whole <laughs> life, she's told me. And I, I hope she's joking, but she's told me that my name is Cameron because Kirk Cameron was just so cute and growing pains. <laughs> That's amazing. So I might be, I might. So be why don't you Kirk rub Cameron. that into the wound over there, Liz? <laughs> you tell me I'm full of shit. <laughs> I, allow, allow me, allow me to steal a Jason Stapletonism here. Oh God. It's like, you know, I, I don't, I don't need to brag because the universe keeps doing it for me. Just keep proving me right. <laughs> uh, uh, God. Yeah. Okay. I think we're done. Jeez. Hey, thank you so much for coming on, Cam. It's been an awesome show. Thank you for indulging us in our our ridiculousness. And uh, no worries, man. You have yourself a good, I, I, good I, Friday I night. I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was a fun Friday night. So. Yeah, for sure. All right, take it easy, bud. <laughs> you too. Thanks. So, I think that that went well. Oh, that was uh, fabulously enjoyable for me. I'm always weirded out talking to to Christians. Why? I don't You're know. Just people. Yeah. You believe in magical zombie Jesus. And you know, it's even more weird when they're like into trolling and shit. Yeah. It's just such a weird dynamic. There's some of us who get the joke. I'm just saying. Is it a joke? It just feels like it's not a joke to some people. Well, no, like Christianity is not a joke, but that you guys don't get Christianity can be a joke. I guess. Are you really okay with it? I mean. Or do you have to be okay with it? I feel like it's not really my job to to figure it out for you, make it make it real for and you. And that's how you know she's not Catholic, folks, because no. that is your job. If you're Catholic. Yeah, it's got apostolic in the name of the religion for a reason. Fair enough. I just, I just, you know, try and walk my walk, and hopefully you see the light and figure it out on your own. It is a nice walk. Whatever. He's shaking them buns around on that walk. <laughs> sure. I like buns. Yeah, who doesn't like buns? I. There are people that don't like them. I don't understand it, but. Mm, what are you gonna do? 
And there are people that will choose boobs over buns too. And well, I mean, boobs are awesome. I'm boobs are awesome, argue. but buns are better. Well, I don't know about all that. Buns are more important. I think they're both pretty good. I I I wish that the fifteen pounds I realized I'd, I'd gained since since having my kid and losing all the baby weight, I wish those fifteen pounds had been evenly distributed and were evenly between the two. They're pretty. That's not they're pretty well distributed, honey. Okay, fair enough. I'm just going to let it sit there and stir. Just, just make it weird. It's okay. Yes, making it weird is what I am absolutely professional at. Yeah. So, well, let's uh, send them out and tell them, listen to Free Talk Live, as yeah. we do, beginning and the end of every episode. Tell mm-hmm. you, listen to something. They're fun. They put out way too much content. They put out a ton of content. I did not listen to all of it. Absurd amount of content. Well, it's like a two-hour show, 365 days a year. They just... They just have a moment on and like, the air. Every I can't. Day. They do a digest episode that's like a half hour every day, really? where it's just kind of like the best of. Yeah. Each episode. That sounds fun. Maybe I maybe I'll listen to that one. Mm, I, I can't. No. Too much. No. Too I, much? I know. I hate, no. It's I hate having conversations broken up like that. I don't oh, want to hear the highlights oh, of their okay. conversations. Gotcha. Like it's okay in this week in Liber Pods where it's like okay a highlight of one conversation enough to tease you. Right, and then you go listen to the show. Yeah, yeah, but in this case, it's like they're teasing me with their own episodes. Like, I just, I'm like, I can't do it. I want to listen to the episode. <laughs> Fair enough. So, go. Go listen to Free Talk Live. Indeed. Um, Stop by soundslikeliberty.com and do all the fun stuff that are on there. Which are, you yeah, know. and you can uh, find Nick on Twitter, and uh, you can find us on Facebook, and yeah. Yeah, do some sharing, folks. Well, we're trying to do some growth, and, uh, you know. Be prepared. Peace yeah. Freaks is coming. Peace Freaks is coming. Go do that thing that uh, you do that nobody else does. You know, make it magical. Okay. I like magic. Yeah. Not really the card game so much, but like I like actual magic. Sure. Like, uh, you know, Clyde Barker kind of magic. Uh, I mean, yeah. Magica? Lord, no, Lord of Illusions and stuff like uh, that. Oh, okay. You know? I like Lord of the Rings. Where's magic? Nick's at? You do like Lord of the Rings. I do. I like it a lot. I just like Peter Jackson. Yeah. I also like uh, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, all right, all right. I wish she had done one of those Potter movies, because that would have been cool. I mean, I'm still pulling Ravenclaw, but... Yeah, no, I mean, everything is better if Guillermo does it. In fact, the only two people that should ever direct anything are Guillermo del Toro. And Tim Gunn. What? No, not Tim Gunn. Tim Gunn's a fashion guy. What's his name? James Gunn. <laughs> I wasn't actually going to say that. No? I, I'm willing to get rid of him if everything is done by Terry Gilliam. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Or uh, Guillermo del Toro. I feel like Terry Gilliam's just done with it by now. I don't know. He did the, the Man of La Mancha for, what, 30 years, and he's just like, screw all this noise. He made it. He did finally make it, yes. Or at least the movie about the movie. Is that what it is? I'm not sure. I gotta go watch that. I still haven't watched it yet. I know, we gotta go watch it. I'm gonna do that right now, in fact. Uh Alright, folks. Peace.